Hey there, welcome. We're going to talk today about what's called evaluating the nth root of a number. And the goal is that you're going to learn to find all of the real nth roots of any number. Or of any real number at any rate. Now, one of the things that we need to do here is discuss what it means to find an nth root. Okay? And here's what I mean by what the nth root of a number is. Alright? If I tell you that b to the nth power is equal to some number a, then that means that b is an nth root of a number a. For instance, whenever we're talking about roots, you're used to talking about square roots. And so, if I were to tell you, say that 7 squared is equal to 49, then you tell me that 7 is equal to the square root of 49, right? Or similarly, um, I could say that if nev negative 7 squared is equal to 49, then, seven, no, then negative 7 is a square root of 49. Happens to be the negative square root. But nevertheless, all right, you know that if a number to the second power gives you something, that that first number is the square root of the second number. Well, what we'd like to do in this section is we'd like to go ahead and extend that idea beyond square roots. All right, so we could go on to cube roots then. If I told you that 4 to the 4th power is equal to 256, what that would mean is that 4 is the 4th root of 256. Similarly, if I were to tell you that negative 8 to the 3rd power is equal to negative 512, then you should be able to tell me that negative 8 is a, I shouldn't have used the word the there a moment ago, I should have used a, um, then negative 8 is a third root of negative 512. That's the idea. So when we're talking about finding the nth root of a number, all we're referring to is that we're going to be finding the third root or the fourth root or the tenth root or the twenty-first root of a number rather than just the second root or square root as you're used to doing. So let's talk a little bit more about real nth roots of a. One of the things that I need to teach you is the notation associated with taking an nth root. Of course, you know that if you're trying to take a square root of a number, that you would say you're finding the square root of 25, for instance, right? Okay, well, let's be more general than that. If I want to find the nth root of some number a, that means that this is the way I could write that expression. And what I need to do then is teach you some vocabulary associated with radical expressions involving nth roots. One of the things that we're going to say is that that value of n that indicates which root you're taking is some called, something called the index of the radical. Okay. Now the symbol itself that you're used to seeing with square roots, that's called a radical symbol. And then the quantity underneath the radical symbol is, in this case A, is known as the radicand. Those are some terms that you ought to be familiar with. Alright, well, it turns out that there are rules for the nth root of A depending on what the index is, what type of number the index is, and on depending on what type of number the radicand is as well. And I'd like to go through some of those rules with you right now. For instance, We can talk about what an nth root, a real nth root of a number would be if n is an even integer. And then later on we'll talk about what can happen with a real nth, real nth root of a number if n is an odd integer. Okay, so right now I'm looking to see what happens if your index is an even number. Alright, well that's going to depend on the value of the radicand. Is the radicand negative? Is it zero? Or is it positive? Now I'm going to give you the, the answer to each of these things, and I want you to keep in mind when I say a real nth root of a number, what I'm referring to is that I don't want to use imaginary numbers. The real part of that means I want to use real numbers instead of imaginary numbers. Okay, so let's suppose that A is negative, and I'm going to make an example off to the side for this. Suppose that A was negative 25. 
All right, now something else I need to describe right now is if you ever see a radical symbol and you don't see an index written down, that's supposed to imply that the index of the radical is 2. Ordinarily, you're used to implying if there's nothing written that you have a 1 somewhere, but with the radicals, it's implied that you have a 2, or in other words, that you have a square root. And, well, you ought to know that the square root of negative 25 doesn't exist with imaginary numbers. And that's the same no matter what we're what the index is as long as it's an even number. You can't take the fourth root of a negative number. You can't take the, the eighth root of a negative number and so forth. There are no real roots of a number if that number is negative. So, if n is an even integer and a is negative, then there are no real roots of that number. Okay? Now, what if a was zero? Now, I hope this is fairly obvious. If I have the square root of 0, or if I have the fourth root of 0, or if I have the tenth root of 0, in every one of those cases, you're going to get 0, because 0 to the second power is 0, right? 0 to the fourth power is 0, and 0 to the tenth power would be 0. So, if a is equal to 0, then the nth root of a, of a is going to be equal to zero as well. And then finally, let's suppose we're trying to find the nth root of a positive number. Well, if we're trying to find the nth root of a positive number, your radicand is positive, then it turns out that you get a positive and a negative value that will be the nth root. Or in other words, you get two real roots, and one of those would be considered the positive nth root of a, and the other one would be considered the negative nth root of a, and so we could say it's plus or minus the nth root of a. So for instance, since 7 to the 4th power is equal to 2401, and negative 7 to the 4th power is also equal to 2401, since there's two different numbers to the 4th power that give you that value, that means that both 7 and negative 7 would be fourth roots of 2,401. Okay, so whenever n is even, you can have no real roots if the radicand is negative. You could have one real root if the radicand is 0. And you get two real roots if the radicand is a positive number. Well, what if n is odd? Now, when we're talking about when n was even we were talking about how many roots does that um, real number a have. Well, if n is an odd integer, it turns out you always have one real nth root of that number. Now, let me start with the obvious thing here. If our radicand is equal to 0, it doesn't matter whether n is even or odd. You're only going to have one real root, and that nth root would be equal to 0. Correct? But here's where this is different, is that it doesn't matter whether the radicand is positive or negative. If n is odd, then you're only going to have one real nth root of that number. And I'm going to pick, let's say, 6 and show you how this works. Um, if I wanted to get, if I wanted to use negative 6 and raise it to an odd numbered power, I would get an odd numbered result, wouldn't I? And so the nth root of a, or rather the cube root of this negative number 216, would end up being a negative number. And as long as n is, is an odd number, I would always, if I raise a negative number to that power, get a negative value. And so I can always take the nth root of a negative number, and I will get a negative number as a result when n is odd. Now, if n is odd and a, the radicand, is positive, well, that just means that the nth root of a is going to be greater than 0. All right, using that number 6 again, I could say that 6 to the third power is positive 216, and so that would mean that the cube root of 216 would be a positive 6. If I wanted to know what the fifth root of 81 is, no, well, not 81, but let's say 243, then that would be 3 because 3 to the 5th power is equal to 243. So if n is odd, then you're just going to get 
the same sign for the nth root of the number as the radicand a was itself. That wasn't maybe the best way of wording this, but I hope that you get the idea so far. Let's go ahead and look, work through a few different examples where we apply that principle of finding the real nth roots of a number a. All right, here in these examples, it says to find the indicated nth root or roots of a. Now, either we'll have 0, 1, or 2 nth roots of every number, depending on if n is odd or even, and depending on if a is positive or negative or 0. Now, a is 0 in any of these, so we're really we're caring if a is positive or negative. So, here in the first example, we've got an even-numbered root. All right, even-numbered index, I should say. And our radicand would be positive. So that means that I'm supposed to get two real roots and these would be the real roots we would get. We would get plus or minus the fourth root of 10,000. Now we need to figure out what number to the fourth power would give us 10,000 in order to be able to figure that out and it turns out that 10 to the fourth power is equal to 10,000. So that means then that we get positive 10 or negative 10 as a result, because each of those numbers to the fourth power will give you 10,000. Okay. Well, here's another example where n is even, and now a is negative. And we cannot take an nth root of a negative number if n is an even value. So we would say that there are no real roots here. And that's simply because whether I were to take a positive value like 4 or a negative value like negative 4, neither one of those will give me a positive, uh, sorry, a negative 16 whenever I square them. So there are no real roots right there. But now for these last two examples, you see that n is an odd value. And what we said is that in every circumstance, you get one real root if n is an odd integer. So what we have to do is figure out then what number to the fifth power would give us 243. And it turns out that it's 3 to the fifth power that would give you 243. And so we would say that the fifth root here of 243 is equal to 3. And that's because 3 to the fifth power again gives us 243. All right, and then finally, with this set of examples, here I have another odd index. n is equal to 3, and a is negative. Well, since n is odd, it's okay. We will get one root, one real root of that negative value. We will be finding the cube root of negative 64, and that happens to be negative 4. And the reason it's negative 4 is because negative 4 to the third power would give you negative 64. All right, so at this point, you ought to have a good idea of how to find the real nth roots of a number a. I just want to take you through a couple other things here before we're done. Just different ways that you might apply or see this um, idea of nth roots applied. One of the places where you'll apply the idea of finding an nth root is simply if you have an expression written with radical notation like this. And when it's written with radical notation like that, um, you have to pay very careful attention to what it is they're asking for. Because, for instance, here we're trying to find a fourth root of 16. But this doesn't mean find all of the real fourth roots of 16. We know there would be two of those. Because there's no negative sign in front of the radical, what this is telling you to do is to find the principal fourth root of 16. And the principal fourth root of a positive number would be the positive value that gives you this number whenever you raise it to the fourth power. So the positive fourth root of 16 would be 2 because positive 2 to the fourth power gives you 16. Now, if I was looking to get the negative root of a number, I have to put the negative sign in front of it. Or what I'm going to do is say that that's the opposite of the root. And all I mean by opposite root is that the principal of 4th root of 16 would be positive 2. And so the opposite root of opposite 4th root of 16 would be negative 2. And that works because negative 2 to the 4th power gives you 16 as well, right? Okay. And then fourth root of negative number, well, there is no real root for that because, again, if a is even, sorry, if, if n is even, then you can't have a be negative. All right, well, then let's look at whenever you have an odd numbered out here and you have radical or expressions written in radical notation. 
Well, this would mean find the principal root of positive 729, and the principal third root of a positive number is going to be positive, and that ends up being 9. Actually, 9 to the third power gives you 729. This means find the principal root of negative 729, and the principal root of negative 729 would be negative 9, because negative 9 to the third power gives you that value. And this would mean find the opposite root, opposite cube root of negative 729, which would be the opposite of negative 9, and that would be positive 9. Okay, so don't just give you, don't just give uh, plus or minus whenever you see things written in radical notation, unless you're asked to find the positive and negative root, for instance. Okay, and then what about if we see equations in which we have to solve using square roots or fourth roots or that kind of thing? Well, that is the last thing that I want to show you. If I'm trying to solve the equation x to the 6th power is equal to 64, then what I'm wanting to do is find every number to the positive 6th power that gives me 64. And so in order to get x by itself, I'm going to have to take the principal and the opposite 6th root of 64. And it happens that 2 is the 6th root of 64, and so we would get positive and negative 2 then for that result. Now here, x cubed equals negative 125. I'm trying to find the cube root of negative 125, and we don't need to find the opposite root there because, well, there's only one cube root of neg a negative number, and that happens to be negative 5. Okay, one more here. I'm trying to, I'm saying that some number x minus 2 raised to the fourth power is equal to 256. Well, the first step there would be to take the positive and negative fourth root of both sides. Because this is an even number, we've got to find out there's a positive and a negative value that it could raise to the fourth power to give you this number. So we're looking for the positive and the, or the principal and the opposite root, fourth root of 256. All right, the, positive, the principal and the opposite root. So that would mean x minus 2 would equal plus or minus 4, which is 4 to the 4th power gives you 256. So we would get x equals 2 plus 4, and x equals 2 minus 4, and we would get two different solutions for that equation. All right, you ought to know how to find the nth root of a real number, whether that number is positive or negative, um, depending on whether the um, index of the root is odd or even. Thanks for your attention. Hope this is helpful for you. See you next time.